So, Messianic Manic believes intentional states are not evidence for souls, because intentional states can be had by, get this, computers. He's essentially saying that material objects cannot contain representational information. The fact that this is false should be obvious to anybody watching this video. You are watching a video of me that is stored on some server somewhere. It is no more impossible for a brain to hold a thought of me than it is for a computer to hold a video of me. What's the difference? Granted, he was arguing against Craig's dualism, which is something I don't care much for, but I don't think Messianic realizes just how extraordinary his counterclaim is. Computers only manipulate syntax, they don't actually have semantics, so they can't be said to be about anything. This is easily provable by anyone who's taken basic symbolic logic. Suppose, for example, I give you the following two logical statements. 1. If I see parrotfish, I will see blue. 2. If I see albatrosses, I will see white. Both of these statements can be written out symbolically in the same if p then q format, and both can be represented by the same sequence of truth values in a truth table like this. These truth values are, of course, no different than the ones and zeros in a computer program, and from them we can compute various things about the system. But here's the problem. They're just syntax. But syntax doesn't actually mean anything. In this case, the syntax for q is what corresponds to the blue in the first statement and the white in the second statement. So if what Messianic Manic is saying is true, then blue is the same color as white, and is also the same thing as anything else you could put into Q. But of course that's not true, which is why we were able to be about things rather than simply manipulate syntax in our brains. Computers can't do this, however. Computers only manipulate syntax. The syntax then tells the screen what kind of light to emit, which then goes into our eyes and down our optic nerve. At some point along the line, our mind receives the signal as a conscious percept, which we can then say is about something. The syntax only correlates to this aboutness, though. But this should be obvious when we look at a screen of digital data, or for that matter, when we look at a visual field of blue or white qualia. As you can obviously see, none of the ones or zeros are blue or white, and neither the blue nor white qualia are made up of any ones or zeros, no matter how far down you zoom in on them. For another good argument against computers having mental states, I will refer you to John Searle's Chinese room argument in the description. It argues along the same lines that syntax is not semantics, though it puts you in the place of the computer in such a way that you can very readily see that you cannot understand Chinese simply by understanding the syntax of Chinese. Now, Messianic Maddox seems to believe that Craig's conclusion to this, that we have immaterial souls, is somehow extraordinary. No. William Lane Craig argues that the supernatural is the best explanation for intentional states of consciousness. In other words, the fact that you can think about things. He argues that your material brain can't be about things. Your thoughts can be about a sandwich or about a car, but your brain can't be about anything. Therefore, your mind must be a separate entity from your brain. Your mind must be an immaterial soul. For some reason, he doesn't seem to understand how extraordinary a claim this actually is. No, it's not. It's actually intuitively obvious. There's nothing in the concept of dead matter that in any way relates to the concepts of subjective experience. So, of course, the mind is immaterial. Now, yes, of course, Craig's dualism is false, but the problem Messianic Manic is having is that he's trying to shoehorn consciousness into outdated intuitions for which there is no evidence anyway. I found this in the comments on his video. Apparently, he seems to think that information comes from matter rather than vice versa. Well, according to today's theoretical physicists, he's just plain wrong. The future, at least of, of this development, will be that we start actually with information. So information is going to be our starting point, uh, and space-time is not something that we start with. Uh, we, we, we forget about what space is and what time, uh, and then somehow the information, by thinking about how much information is, what information is doing, then the space-time will, what we call, be emergent. It will come out of just a bunch of zeros and ones. Now, I don't agree with Berlin that the information is digital, even though it can be represented digitally, but the point remains that space-time and the matter in it come from information and not the other way around. When I pointed this out to Messianic, he deferred to the many worlds, or shall I say the Ptolemaic interpretation of quantum mechanics to save materialism. Of course, I pointed out that this adds in extra unnecessary probability factors and violates Occam's razor, and ironically, he agreed with me that it is more complicated, but then went on to say that it is more believable than the idealist alternative anyway. I fail to see how, though. The informationalist approach, in addition to explaining quantum mechanics, goes on to explain all sorts of other effects outside of quantum mechanics. And this is actually why it's so popular in quantum gravity. In fact, it's arguably the case that someone could derive both general relativity and quantum mechanics 
from scratch inside of a lucid dream based solely on the fact that the dream environment is the product of information processing. He then insisted that he, he couldn't conceive of an immaterial thing, and therefore that the materialist explanation was better. I don't see why that's so hard, though. Anyone who has conceived of solipsism knows how easy it is to conceive of immaterialism. Besides, I don't know how one can conceive of something that is not immaterial. To do that, one would need to think outside of one's immaterial conceptions. Okay, so Messianic, I don't know if you got the memo, but your brain's just a hologram, just like everything else you see in this so-called physical world. Your mind is actually what's real. I don't see why you would go to such lengths to explain away idealism when it explains much more with much less, and when the alternative makes absolutely no sense in trying to explain consciousness. All the evidence we have right now points to matter being an illusion of perception, and not the other way around. So recent experiments led by a group at the University of Vienna, Austria, provide the most compelling evidence yet that there is no objective reality beyond what we observe. So it's really the observation, the observation that creates the reality. And what they found is that Leggett's inequality is violated as well as Bell's. Even if you allow for instantaneous influences, quantum measurements do not fit with the idea of an objective reality. And if our mental perceptions do not reduce to our perceptions of the brain, then it is very clear they are not the same thing. How do I know the former doesn't reduce to the latter? Well, Sam Harris told me so. There's nothing about introspection that leads you to sense that your subjectivity is at all dependent or even related to voltage changes and chemical interactions going on inside your head. Okay, you can, you can feel, you can drop acid, you can meditate for a year, you can do whatever you want to perturb your nervous system. You can, you can feel yourself to be one with the universe, and at no point in that transformation do you get a glimpse that there's a hundred trillion neurons in your head, uh, or synapses in your head, that, that are doing anything. If you like this video, subscribe. And don't forget to check out my novel, Malaris, The Lances of Light, on Amazon Kindle in the description below. Now you can find us on Facebook at Idealism and Science versus Atheism. This mind is the matrix of all matter.